We discussed about solving dynamic problems by implicit and explicit method so that you find the response of structures. The output of such analysis included deformation, stress, strain, etc. And we're aware that for large-scale and long-duration dynamic problems, the computational costs to solve them are significant. Even for explicit method, the required number of time steps could be very large. In some cases, when the distortion of materials is not the main concern, but the rigid motion is the response that engineers are looking for, rigid dynamics is the right path to go with. Usually, this happens when the objects are very stiff and strong, or the objects are known to have very less distortion in the analysis. Especially in complex and large-scale systems, making parts rigid can save large amount of computational cost. The key here is, there's no need to solve things that we don't care. So in the equation of motion, we can remove the stiffness matrix K. What a release, right? In the case where there's an assembly, different parts of bodies are linked by joints or contacts by rigid dynamics. Unlike dynamics for flexible bodies, which looks for deformation at each material point, rigid body dynamics looks for rigid motion of the system. Consider that if we want to simulate a softball or baseball hitting, we definitely should use a flexible body, because in this case, neglecting the distortion is far from realistic. However, if it's a hardball or golf ball hitting, rigid body might be appropriate and efficient if we want just looking for impact force and rebound velocity. As for degree of freedom, in 3D space, one entire rigid body has only 6 degree of freedom at most. Moreover, rigid body dynamics solves for relative displacement between different parts. Say if we have two rigid rods and they are linked to each other, and one of them are linked to the ceiling. The links between them are modeled as revolute joints. There are 6 times 2, that is 12 absolute degree of freedom for the two rigid bodies. For revolute joints, one revolute joint has 5 constraints and one free rotational degree. So two revolute joints add 10 constraint equations to the system. In total, we have 12 plus 10, that is 22 equations to solve for the problem. However, if we use relative degree of freedom, we can further reduce all of these to only two degree of freedoms, that is, the rotational angles of the two joints. As long as these two angles are known, the configuration of this system is decided. Usually, a dynamic problem that can be modeled as rigid bodies is not a short duration problem. However, since structural stiffness is removed, there is no nonlinear equation to solve, so explicit method is suitable for most rigid body dynamics. In some cases, that there some parts are more flexible while the others are very stiff, it is wise to combine flexible bodies and rigid bodies in one analysis. In such cases, usually, either implicit or explicit method can be used, depending on the condition of the flexible bodies. For example, for this engine piston and connecting rod assembly. It's a fairly complex system. We can solve the entire system as flexible bodies, or we can make them all rigid body parts. Of course, using all flexible bodies will be painful if our computational resource is limited. But using rigid bodies, we lose all the stress and strain results of the structure. In this case, if we clearly know the analysis focus of the structure, for example, we're trying to design the connecting rod, then we can make only this part flexible and the rest of the part rigid. This way, the running time will be reduced and at the same time, useful results are obtained.